Folks, thanks for joining us today. My name is John Dubas with Premier Marketing, and we'll be spending the next 45 minutes to an hour or so discussing just what isn't covered by Medicare and how does that help us sell. Having a solid knowledge base of what the governmental programs do offer and the programs that we offer as independent insurance agents that work in conjunction with those programs is of paramount importance to us uh, now for the remainder of the, the selling year here and going into AEP 2021 and the possibilities that that brings to us. Today's presentation is being recorded and it, the link to that recording and other material that we reference through the course of the presentation will be sent to all who have RSVP to today's webinar. As a bit of housekeeping, you'll notice in the software package that there's a section in there for questions. Please make use of that. Um, we have everyone muted at present to guard against the background noises that are inherent with these types of presentations. And we wanna make certain that we're able to deliver the answers to the questions that you pose though anyway. We do so during the course of the presentation in many circumstances, but we'll make certain to address all the questions at the end. Um, we'll also give you a bit of background about Premier Marketing, a level set for those of you who are not as familiar with us as others may be. We are a national marketing organization founded in 1968. We're part of the Integrity Marketing Platform with offices across the country. We act as an insurance wholesaler, providing insurance products to the public through independent insurance agents such as yourself. And we do so through contracts at the highest possible commission levels and recruiting contracts available to those agents and agencies that uh, qualify. That package of benefits is delivered through a full insurance portfolio that includes the choices in the Medicare space, the Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement plans, and the standalone Part D prescription drug programs. But we also offer a full portfolio of life insurance and annuity products, including final expense life insurance and pre-need plans, long and short-term care programs, disability income plans, and ancillary benefits such as dental vision, hearing, critical illness, cancer plans, and hospital indemnity programs. Those Medicare Advantage carriers include the national carriers and many of the small, or I should say the influential regional carriers that are important to you in your market, and that same philosophy carries over into the standalone PDP arena where the national carriers are there for your use. You'll notice on this slide that it does mention Envision RX. Envision is discontinuing their use of brokers as a uh, distribution channel. We wanted you to be aware of that, however, before we remove the name moving forward. In the Medicare supplement space, we have a very robust offering of Medicare supplements including tools that can help you be successful in this space as well. And in the ancillary arena, in each of the categories, you have the national leaders in those products. These make a good crossover sale for us, drive additional persistency in our business, create additional revenue streams, and also give us the opportunity to use them as a marketing door opener as well. When we look at the Medicare market overall, if you are to look at it based just on the numbers of people turning 65, well, you don't come on a presentation like this without hearing about the silver tsunami, the aging of the baby boomers. 10,000 people plus every day turning 65, one every 10 seconds. But if you looked at it just on the basis of age, you're missing part of the market in the fact that not everyone that turns 65 accesses there are full Medicare benefits at that age. You see some people continue to work or for another reason, defer their coverage, but that's more than made up by the portion of the Medicare population that's under the age of 65. Those that are accessing their benefits because of medical disability. And this group, while it's about 15% of the population, it's also a very good prospect base for us to serve with the programs that we offer, and especially be aware of what Medicare does and doesn't cover in this space because of the uh, limits of availability of other plans to cover some of the shortfall. When you look at the Medicare population overall, you see a diverse bunch of people, and it is a 
population that requires multiple products and multiple ways of approaching the individuals and a, a number of other things that require us to be flexible. Because two-thirds of the population has three-plus chronic conditions, and many of them um, have some challenges with their finances as well. You'll see a number here uh, that is, when it comes to income, it's increased 26.2 on the last numbers that I can find on it. And so we have an opportunity to help people budget for the shortfalls in their base coverage and plan for those um, with some sort of fiscal responsibility. Choices. That's a big thing that comes into play when we look at what Medicare me and Medi what Medicare covers and what it doesn't, because folks have choices across the, the line as to what they can and can't do. To begin with, Part B of Medicare is optional. Technically, they could decline that if they wanted to. Um, most don't, some do, but some will then choose to self-insure for all of the balance, um, the shortfalls in the base medical coverage, covering the drugs out of their pocket. Some folks will pick up a Part D program to help with the medications and self-insure the rest. Some will take out a MedSup, uh, a standardized, modernized Medicare supplement, and add a Part B program to take care of their needs. And then some folks go into the Medicare Part C programs, the Medicare Advantage plans that incorporate much of the benefits in a singular package. In each of these circumstances, there are shortfalls or there are needs to be addressed. And knowing those gaps in the coverage can really help us with not only accommodating the request of our prospects and clients, but serving them with programs that can address those shortfalls. What we're seeing when people come into Medicare, I don't say age in because of however they come into the program initially, you see basically an even choice between Medicare Advantage and MedSup plans. And it's important to note that there's no one program that's the right answer for everyone. And so having, once again, that base knowledge of what one program covers and what another one doesn't to supplement the Medicare coverages is very important to us as well. You'll notice a category that says original Medicare only. This encompasses the folks that are accessing benefits through the VA, have declined any other type of coverage, may have group retiree coverage, um, they may be many medics. Um, there's a number of possibilities in there, but there is a portion obviously that have original Medicare only. And knowing those shortfalls, as many of you already do, can make a huge difference in the offerings that are there for you to use um, to serve your prospects and clients. So when we get into some of the specifics as to what Medicare does and doesn't cover, it's important to have a base understanding of some of the language. And so one of the things that will come to you as part of the follow-up is a link to uh, a package that will explain the acronyms used in our industry. Uh, it's interesting as many folks have great tenure in serving this population, how some of these acronyms can still kind of stump us. Um, so it's important for us to have a guide that can help explain uh, the coverages and what some of these lovely letters mean and that will come to you as well. One of the things that helps us when we look at the Medicare market overall, is having tools that help us explain exactly what Medicare does cover. And so Medicare has come out with a What's Covered app that's available to everyone. Um, Medicare beneficiaries can use it. Uh, agents and uh, agencies such as ourselves can use it. And it gives us hands-on information that helps us with, okay, how do they cover dialysis? Or how do they cover end-stage renal disease. I think this tool will be increasingly important as the changes in some of those coverages come about and are uh, spoken to readily as we approach open enrollment. You also have the standard Bible of the Medicare world, uh, the Medicare and You handbook. These are available in hard copy, obviously, but you can access an e-handbook as well. And this is what a lot of agents who specialize in the Medicare supplement space use as a means to explain the differences between the programs and make certain that folks understand what is and is not covered. Because 
It is a very comprehensive guide. It gives us the information we need on different types of programs, but it also tells us some of the shortfalls of traditional Medicare. And folks that are in the Medicare space are aware of the fact that Medicare is not a totally comprehensive coverage, and you have out-of-pocket expenditures with traditional Medicare only that come out of pocket. It includes that hospitalization uh, deductible per stay of $1,408 in 2020. It'll go up for 2021. And then the coinsurance if you're in the hospital longer than prescribed periods or, or certain periods. You have to come out of pocket on a daily rate after 60 days. And after 90 days, if you're still in the hospital, you have to come up with the coverages to help in that regard, and that may entail the use of a lifetime reserve day. So having a program that can help with covering hospital stays is important, as is addressing the shortfalls in the Part B coverages with their annual deductible and the coinsurance that comes along with this coverage for these medical services. So we have some options to address that, obviously. The Medicare is really Medicare is really good about offering different guides. As an oversight here, this is a Medicare.gov's ebook section, and you can see the number of different publications that are available for you in different topics. You can download them. You have sites where you can go and order these and have them sent to you as well. To order them in bulk, uh, not so much. However, you can get the copies of them. And one of the first options that people have, as we talked about in the graphic earlier, is to use a Medigap policy to address the shortfalls in the base medical coverage. This guide helps us tremendously. This is required by many states to be supplied to the prospect as you discuss Medigap policies, um, but it gives you then detail as to different policy types and um, the differences in those coverages. This tool that we offer through our, our relationship with CSG gives us the opportunity to go in and do those comparison between not only the different plan types with uh, the offerings in your market, but also with the different carriers offering them at different prices. So it's a great way to address that base need of a shortfall in the medical portion of coverage by Medicare. You also have opportunities to address that through the use of Medicare Advantage programs. This publication helps with the explanation and understanding of these programs. And while supplying this type of material to a prospect at point of sale might be kind of a moot point, they're not gonna read 114 pages before you go on to visit them. This may be a crucial point, as is the other documents that we discussed, in the self-discovery process that many Medicare uh, beneficiaries go through before they choose a plan. Um, Death Research, CSG, a number of organizations have done surveys that show there's an increasing number of folks coming into Medicare who actually shop, self-discover, before they visit with an individual to help them make a choice. So having these documents available and making use of some of the links where they're found on the, the internet can really help you in explaining those processes, as can this tool and some of the other programs that we're rolling out for AEP. Medicare Center gives you the possibility of explaining the choices that an individual has with Medicare Advantage and PDP programs in a particular market. Because of the way it's set up and the information it draws from the government, it gives you an opportunity to supply material to your prospects and clients so they can do a plan-by-plan -plan comparison. It shows up to three plans compared at the same time, gives you the opportunity, as does the CSG engine, to collect that electronic scope of appointment and store it for the necessary 10 years, whether you sell them or not. And then also, as CSG does with the Medicare supplement programs, gives you the opportunity to electronically enroll the individuals that you visit with. This program actually creates a microsite for you as well and can act as a mini CRM so you can do year-over-year -year comparisons of the plans that are available to your prospects and clients, including the changes that come about 
seemingly endlessly when it comes to some of the medications that are out there. Prices change all the time. Uh, the plans have the opportunity or the discretion, at their discretion, to change the drugs that are listed on a formulary, what cure they're on. And so having a year-over-year -year comparison of those programs are paramount to your success. It also, in both cases, really helps you become more efficient in addressing those base needs with Medicare of covering the medical coverage shortfall. You can do so uh, electronically, telephonically, however it goes about, but you can get them the information that's necessary for them to make a decision for you to help them with their base medical coverage. So that's kind of the obvious part of what Medicare doesn't cover, the deductibles and coinsurance um, of approved procedures. It's also important to note that if a procedure is not approved by Medicare, to move point, it's not covered by Medicare or Medicare supplement. Um, there are certain instances where certain services that are not covered with traditional Medicare have assistance with Medicare Advantage plans, um, but the base medical coverage has to be augmented in one way or another to help, excuse me, the prospect and client become comfortable with the choices they have to cover that financial shortfall and base medical coverage. You also see that the government puts in this fine document the fact that prescription drugs, outpatient prescription drugs, are not covered by a traditional Medicare nor by a Medicare supplement. That requires the enrollment into a standalone Part D program or into a Medicare Advantage program that has that coverage integrated into their package of benefits. This is also an opportunity for us to describe the avenues that an individual has to help cut their drug costs. That may include other medications that are available um, in that same drug type. The Medicare Center program will actually do comparisons to help you with that. And we realize that you're not a, a pharmacist, nor do you play one on television, but this gives you a way to make certain that your prospects and clients know that you're knowledgeable in what you do and yet that you are working to deliver the best value to them with the programs that are offered. Once again, the Medicare Center program can help in that regard and pick up that shortfall. In each of these circumstances, it's important to note that timing is important as well. And so having an idea as to the, the timelines that are associated with enrollment in the different programs can make a huge difference, not only in avoiding penalties, but also making certain that the coverage is there when they need it. So having that can be helpful. What you also have is an opportunity to actually fill in some of the shortfalls with Medicare Advantage programs as well. In individual sales and seminar selling, I like to address the Clint Eastwood approach to Medicare Advantage and speak to people about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And when it comes to shortfalls in Medicare Advantage programs, some folks will point to the network. I don't necessarily think that is entirely a bad thing because it can help with communication, but there are certain areas that can drive out-of-pocket expenditures to the maximum out-of-pocket that is listed on the programs that you're offering. Keep in mind, traditional Medicare doesn't have a MOOP, doesn't have a max out-of-pocket, but there are certain areas in the Medicare Advantage world that will drive out-of-pocket expenditure toward that MOOP. And one of those is a stay in a hospital, be it driven by whatever cause, because many of the programs will either have a daily rate that comes out of the individual's pocket, um, and it varies from market to market, uh, duration, and in cost, but having a program that can help address that shortfall can make a big difference. Hence, it gives us the opportunity to discuss hospital indemnity programs, the programs that are designed to help cover that shortfall at a very reasonable premium and give you the opportunity to help further help a person who may be enrolling in a zero premium plan, the wherewithal to spend a little bit of money 
to enhance those benefits and make certain that if they go into the hospital, they are being paid by a fee-for-service program, basically that pays them regardless of whatever other coverage they have. So it would work with a person that doesn't have any other type of coverage for the shortfall in Medicare, have Medicare only and maybe a Part D, or an individual in an MA plan based on that daily copay that they have in the hospital or a per state hospital in certain circumstances. And even if you work with a Medicare supplement, depending upon the supplement type, this might be appropriate for medical expenses, but also for those things that are out of pocket that aren't really a medical expense. So it helps people with the unexpected expenses and this program also gives you a way to select a Medicare Advantage program and utilize a fill the gap system to demonstrate how hospital indemnity programs can cover that shortfall and what they cost. One of the other things that we see that comes into play in coverage with Medicare Advantage programs is the challenges with the 20% coinsurance that many of those plans have for therapeutic radiology um, or chemotherapy treatment. That 20% can drive a person's out-of-pocket to that max out-of-pocket pretty quickly. These programs help address some of the key needs that will drive a person into a hospital, but also the conditions that are very expensive and not necessarily part of a standard budget of a household. It can help then with the cancer programs, obviously, but critical illness could bring in a a multitude of other health conditions that would hospitalize an individual or cause additional medical expenditure. And so you're looking at strokes, heart attacks, um, some of the different challenges that come with ALS, MLS, a number of the different chronic illnesses that may be covered under these programs. And these ancillary benefits are a great way to cover that shortfall, but also give you the opportunity to make certain that Additional expenses that may not be medical in nature, travel, stays, uh, missed work, that sort of thing, can really make a difference in uh, helping stabilize the financial stability of your prospects and clients. One of the other things that we can consider when we look at the Medicare space is being knowledgeable of the dual eligibility concept and how different programs can help affect those people positively as well. And by dual beneficiaries, these are folks that have both Medicare and Medicaid. And a large number of these folks may be eligible for assistance programs such as this and the low-income subsidy extra help programs for the prescription drug plans and aren't aware of it. So having that base information available to us, whether we can spill it off the tip of our tongue or if we refer to documents we use in the course of our presentation, this can help people with that drastic shortfall for a population that is limited in income and assets. This then also gives us the opportunity to look into the possibilities of dual special needs plans that specifically address that market and enhance the benefit package available to those who qualify. So we're looking at, in this particular area, three different programs that can really help with the base medical coverage shortfall. Those that help with the base medical because of med sucks, med advantage, and dual eligibles. Making certain that we carry that same concept over into minimalizing the prescription costs on Part D can be very helpful, obviously, as well. You have tools that can help you find it. The carriers will provide uh, links in many circumstances for you through your contract with that particular insurance company, but you also have the National Council on Aging site with benefits checkup that can help you help people in different circumstances find different assistance for the challenges that they face. It may be a shortfall in coverage. It may be the fact that, okay, I've got coverage for it, but that drug is so bloody expensive. How can you help me? So different programs that can come into play to help uh, your prospecting client deliver that service, but also create a value that makes you much more referable as well. So some of the things that can come into play there for you. Some of the other things 
that Medicare doesn't cover may be surprising to those that aren't as familiar to the program as others are. And this is actually taken directly from the Medicare and You Handbook on page 49. Mark that in your Bible. And it speaks to the kind of standard benefits in many circumstances that are out there that people don't understand that Medicare doesn't cover. And some of the first things that come into play, dental. Based dental care, uh, dentures, some of the major services that come into play there um, are not covered by Medicare. And neither are eye examinations, uh, a standard eye examination, and the, the corrective lenses, be they contacts or glasses, are not covered either. The third part of that triumphant that many people look at is the fact that hearing aids and hearing examinations are not covered as well. Well, obviously, you know where that's going to take us. But you also have some other areas that really need addressing as well. And first and foremost of those is in the long-term care arena where many folks assume that, hey, Medicare is going to cover me. And many folks will con confuse Medicare and Medicaid coverages or some long-term coverage, long-term care coverage may be available through Medicaid, but it's not Medicare. Medicare will help with transitions through the, the skilled nursing facility route that many people take when they go into a nursing home, but those long and short-term care pieces of it, boy, they're out of pocket, and people don't realize that in many circumstances when they uh, learn more about Medicare. So that was first pieces that come into play, that dental vision hearing piece. I'm not good at highlighting in different areas, obviously. So you have many programs out there that will discuss a DVH program, a dental vision hearing program. And this can be a very simple approach where many folks will use what I refer to as the Colombo Clause, where they've addressed some of the base coverages. They've gone through a fact finder in certain circumstances. Sometimes they haven't, depending upon the willingness of the individual, the time that's involved, our proficiency at it in many circumstances. But as a person um, goes to the door, it's a question that can be as simple as, who's your dentist? They think about it in a minute. Do you have any help with covering the cost of the care that they provide? And it brings you into an opportunity, once again, to use the CSG quote engine and look at dental coverage through that tool. For those of you who are contracted with carriers that offer that coverage, in most circumstances, they offer an electronic tool to help price and sell the product as well. This one gives you a scope, a broader scope across those different carriers to help address that need for dental. And in many circumstances, it's that same policy that adds vision and hearing benefits. Um, one of the other things that is really important for us to address, and for those of you who have been a caregiver or have had a family member who is in a nursing home, we realize both the need for and the cost of long-term care services without additional coverage. And let's face it, even with coverage, it's not inexpensive. But knowing that long-term care is not covered by Medicare, that makes for another breakaway coverage um, for additional sales and discussions with your prospects and clients. As you complete the base medical coverage, and the solutions that you have for that and the prescription drugs during the course of that presentation, we have then that one question. Um, do you have a plan in place if you have to go into a nursing home? Some very simple questions that aren't exactly pulling out the bright lights and bringing about the Spanish Inquisition to your prospects and clients. It gives you then, however, a way of simply identifying a gap, not only and what the government supplies through Medicare to that individual, but what that person has done on their own to address the shortfall. Some are more aware than others, some aren't. But you have guides that can help you as well that speak to choosing different nursing homes, the cost of those facilities, and how you can go about addressing the needs for those coverages. And it can be both the long-term care or short-term care type of solution. Uh, the long-term care programs um, are very necessary. However, we're seeing 
fewer carriers offer those programs, and underwriting can be a challenge in certain circumstances. Many people address that by offering a short-term care plan. That may be easier to underwrite, more limited in scope for the benefits, but handle the situation that people face um, coming out of a hospital in many times or at home care uh, or going into a long-term care facility with a plan that is designed for a shorter duration. We have the um, great pleasure of having people in our office that can address questions on long and short-term care for you. It's not my circus, not my monkeys, um, but it's an important point to bring up. One of the other programs we really want to discuss when it comes to uh, the shortfalls that a person has with Medicare doesn't really deal with Medicare itself, but the administration that helps collect the fees for Medicare and is of great interest to our target, target population as well, and that's Social Security and the Social Security benefit there is for a death benefit. As it says here on the Social Security website, does Social Security pay death benefits? Well, it has a one-time lump sum death benefit of 255 bucks that can be paid to certain people in certain situations. 255 bucks to be kind of crude. Well, you got a good spade. You got a head start. It doesn't nearly encompass the solutions that are necessary to handle that shortfall. And it can be, of course, a bit of a delicate conversation for some people. But as in all of these other categories that we've spoken to or look to address, a lot of this depends upon our outlook on it and the value of the programs that we're offering. When we go back, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and we examine the base medical coverages, there are agents out there that only sell med subs. There are some folks out there that only sell uh, MA plans, maybe some PDP plans. There are some med sub agents that will offer a PDP as well, but in many circumstances, they'll send people to the government websites and just let them enroll. You have a challenge with all of these areas when you look at it only through your eyes. It's important for us to make certain that we address all of the options that are out there for an individual to utilize to cover their shortfall and educate them as to the differences, looking to do so without spending our through our own wallet. And it's important for us to continue that same mindset when it comes to addressing the inevitable and the final expenses that come into play. So we have tools at Premier that can help you do that. A pre-planning service uh, referred to as legacy safeguard that helps the person plan that process and walk you through a sales scenario, basically revealing a shortfall of funds to address those final needs, that brings you back to either referring to do this later in the, the cycle after EEP, since obviously this is the one product that can't be discussed on a health basis um, until a cooling off period 48 hours later, but this can help set up that discussion in the future. But it also gives you then the opportunity to go back and look at what a final expense policy will cost to cover that shortfall. That CSG engine can help you with that as well. So some different things that can come into play to help you in different areas of shortfall that is very common to the population that we serve. It's important then to have base knowledges of all these programs. Obviously, if you are offering Medicare Advantage programs, many of you have probably already completed certifications or are working on them or have that round to it in your pocket to help you with being able to compliantly offer those programs to the public. You don't have certification for MedSOPs, except for one, it's a limited uh, uh, review. However, being proficient and knowing what those plans, planning, plans can and cannot do is obviously very important for you to properly explain and deliver the programs that are necessary for your prospects and clients. So, since many carriers all have an attitude of, it might be a, a uh, pig, but this is my shade of lipstick, if you're using a particular carrier 
it's important to know their benefits, their procedures, and what is necessary to make those programs most effective for your people. So, carrier training. That goes over into the MA and PDP space as well, of course, to make certain that you're able to explain Clint Eastwood, once again, the good, the bad, and the ugly on all these programs, but also uh, make them realize the necessity for the programs themselves and the possibilities for additional coverages. So it's also then an opportunity for you to go into and discover ways of marketing those programs across the board. That's one of the advantages of being an independent agent and having the flexibility to use more than one company or more than one carrier, uh, more than one area of insurance to overall positively affect your marketing and coverage efforts. And in many cases, agents will use a retail setting to do so. Walmart stores are set up. Folks are getting certified or need to be getting certified for those lickety split in the next couple of weeks in order to make certain that you satisfy uh, that initiative's uh, directives. Carriers offer those same sorts of programs as well. And so working with an insurance company that offers a retail opportunity, either through Walmart or independent of that, many of them require you to do additional training and certification to fit into those initiatives. So satisfying those requirements are obviously very, very important. We make use of a lot of grassroots marketing or working your community concepts, be it face-to-face -face or virtually, to help support any other type of marketing activity that you're doing. So if you are in a retail site, knowing how to mine that area around that store or in your target market can be very important to you, and we have that information with tips and hints on how to do that and how to leverage centers of influence within the community. Knowing about the assistance programs for base coverages, the medical and the drug coverages, be they with a PDP program in conjunction with a Medicare supplement or part of drug coverage that's integrated in an MA plan, knowing the programs that are out there that can help with the cost of those programs, low income subsidy, extra help, Medicare savings programs, can make the difference to you and your client, or potential client, as to how effective those plans can be for an individual of limited income or assets. So knowing those details can be very helpful. We have that information for you as well. We spoke to a couple, two to three different tools already here as to um, how to help deliver the information to your prospects and clients, help them through the decision-making process and the choice that comes from it. So being familiar with those programs are important to you. You need to make certain that you know how to run that quote engine, how effective some of those remote enrollment processes can be. If the signature is obtained by email, by text, by voice, doesn't matter. What options do you have? How can you best use them? And how can you tailor them to help people that have not access to all the different choices. So knowing your tools can be very important for you as well, in addition to having a base understanding of Medicare 101 and that Medicare.gov guide, the Medicare and You book. Uh, there are a ton of materials out there. We have different materials that you can actually use for a Medicare One presentation, be it one-on-one, -on -one, be it a seminar that you're staging live, if possible, or through a Zoom meeting, whatever it happens to be, that delivery of information through presentations that are approved for use, keep you compliant, and deliver the information you need to help educate and sell the population you serve can be very, very important to you. It's also incredibly important to know what's out there. And that includes carrier benefits for the programs that you offer and the competition of those that you don't. We have those available, obviously, for 2020, but they are released by most carriers at this point in time for 2021 as well. And you will see then not only a difference as to the benefits within a particular plan, if there have been plan changes, 
Everything I've seen to date has been enhancement of benefits, or at least the static uh, atmosphere of those programs where the benefits didn't degrade, they improved. You saw the introduction of many social determinant of health benefits, um, non-medical type that might include transportation, over-the-counter benefits, even meal subsidies, uh, those sorts of things. They are all part and parcel of the appeal of the programs that we offer. And as you not only certify with different carriers, you learn their base programs and the differences in benefits. Obviously, you need that material and it delivers through our website there as well. In order to sell them, you gotta be certified with the MA and PDP pieces. I kind of blocked out the 2020 on this because certifications you do now for a new carrier to you, if you are adding a carrier or if you haven't been in this space, it gives you the opportunity to sell for the remainder of 2020 and into 2021 in most cases through that, those certifications. Those are annual requirements. Uh, they can be a pain for certain individuals, but if we look at them as an opportunity to make certain that we stay abreast of the developments of the programs that are out there, it helps us improve our service and our sales to our target, target audience. Government also has programs out there that can help you become comfortable in one space or another as well. The Medicare Learning Network, that's a CMS website, gives you a ton of updates, it helps you with information of questions that are being asked more often than not, including how is ESRD going to be handled in Medicare programs in 2021 and beyond, because that does change, particularly in the Medicare Advantage space, where that is no longer a question that would preclude them from membership in 2021. So having details like that and having them available, not just from a carrier, but from the government itself, well, it can be invaluable for you in establishing your credibility, not to mention your knowledge base on the base part of it. This is also a space where you can procure some of the same presentations we use for the general public that speaks to um, coming into Medicare, uh, maintaining uh, choices within the different types of programs that are there. So there's a number of different pieces of information that can be very, very helpful for you provided by the government. Because it's important to note, we don't need to put all our eggs in one basket. Uh, we'd be betting on a horse maybe that won't come through. And we're de dealing with, as I mentioned earlier, a diverse population where one size doesn't fit all. So having that rounded background, be it a circumstance where you sell that product or not, knowing about it and being able to address um, objections that might arise for one reason or another, is very important to us. And because of the environment we have right now, it's also very important for us to be able to use these tools and work remotely, work virtually, however you wanna put it, deliver the information that's out there and help them make the choice and enroll in a program. We don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what's going on with the duration of the pandemic. Some people think they have better ideas than others as to what it entails and what it doesn't. But a reality is some of the folks that we visit with in the past that wanted face-to-face -face might not want it anymore. And we have to be able to deliver the information and the opportunity to enact coverages without having to really re reinvent the wheel. So having those electronic tools are incredibly important. We also want to make certain that we do things on a compliant basis that get you in front of those individuals. So working up a compliant plan of attack can be very important through the different means of cold calls, community-based programs, programs that are specific to a carrier supported in that fashion, using social media, referring back to our old training of working referrals, and the use of direct mail. So if you're comfortable with the telephonic device that we're speaking through now, or the one that's in your hand, obviously, it's important to note that you can still reach out to people through a cold call. Some folks don't like it, some folks do. It's important to note, though, that Medicare Advantage and PDP programs, you can't cold call for. We can help you with contact information butted up against Do Not Call, 
or Medicare supplements and some of the other ancillary products that allow you to reach out telephonically. However, there are also different means of reaching the community through centers of influence. And we have programs that can help you do that as well. And the support that is necessary to make them pay off, they deliver a return on your investment. And that includes the different retail marketing plans or programs that are out there. Walmart, uh, programs offered through Anthem, Aetna, United Healthcare, uh, a number of companies that will do standalone retail programs on their own. It's important to be able to become engaged in those plans if they're part of your overall marketing structure, but just an involvement at that location kind of hamstrings your overall return on those benefits, and we have some tips and hints that can help you make them much more cost-effective, drive up your return on investment simply by planning a marketing program around that center of influence. So those are available. And then, of course, retail goes beyond just a third-party location. It also goes into the people that are actually delivering the care for the programs that we're offering. So different providers, be they doctors, be they dentists, be they durable medical equipment companies, um, anyone who helps deliver that care can be a source of marketing for you. And in many circumstances, particularly in today's environment, doing so virtually can get you about the same place. Um, doctors, as they address the needs of their patients going into EEP, don't necessarily have the time or the wherewithal, or even more importantly, the licensure to discuss different health programs. Having relationships with those people can help you do that comparison for that particular provider and their population of patients. It's also important to note that <clears throat> dentists find themselves in that same situation as well. And in many circumstances, knowing about the different assistance programs for the costs that are associated with it can help you with the medical, can help deliver the dental programs they need, can help also with the price of drugs and the drug programs that supply those benefits. And it's all through a relationship with those centers of influence in the community. There are different carriers, particularly in the MA and PDP space, that as we go into and through AEP may have different leads available for you as well. A lot of the availability of those leads depends upon the relationship that you have with local management and in certain circumstances, your past production history. If you are newly contracted with a carrier and haven't done any business with them in the fact in the past, don't have any great degree of communication with the local folks, they may not see you as an asset that is um, appropriate for different lead flow. They'll go with the people that quid pro quo, scratch my back, you scratch yours. So being not only licensed, contracted, and certified, it's also kind of in the, hey, here I am space that can help you with carrier-generated leads. There's a lot of talk right now, however, about social media and the programs that are available there. Uh, we have different internet lead generators that we have uh, vetted and worked with, but we also have a specific program for Facebook leads that apply to both Medicare supplement and the final expense space. Um, a discussion about Medicare supplement may lead to other areas as well, particularly medication coverage or some of the other ancillary benefits that we uh, briefly discussed today. But these can be of great value to you and allow you to budget for that expenditure as well, perhaps in smaller individual out-of-pocket outlays than some other programs. Being, of course, able to go back to the referral process to help generate leads is awfully important as well, and we have different programs that can help you become more adept at that as well. One of the mainstays in marketing is direct mail. Um, I don't know about you, there's a lot of hubbub, but you hear about the United States Postal Service at present, not gonna get political, but a lot of what you see in that mailbox when it's delivered is direct mail, advertising for one reason or another. We have a support program for direct mail for our contracted agents, 
and a number of vetted carriers to help in that space as well. So based on production, we can help you with the cost of a direct mail program, deeply discount that cost, help subsidize it, and give you an opportunity to do it consistently. Because let's face it, any type of marketing activity is kind of like an exercise. You do it once, you feel some pain. You do it regularly, and you get greater benefit out of it. These are the vendors that we have vetted and our preferred vendors and are the source of communications for that subsidy program. The top line is for the health programs. The bottom line is for the final expense programs. But these folks have different pieces of communication that are vetted to make certain that we help you stay compliant. That's one of the reasons we use preferred vendors in this instance. We also have a program that delivers you direct mail results without funding the entire campaign. And these are one-offs on never before distributed direct mail responses, but you're buying basically the response instead of the whole campaign, hoping for a greater return when you're buying the whole campaign. So that's available for you as well. And it helps then with that cross-selling effort because we know that the more products we have in the house, even if they're with different companies, and they're, but they're with one particular agent, it drives up the persistency of all the programs that are in that house, less likely to lapse, uh, more likely to continue to serve the need for which they were sold, and the compensation that come to us as a result. Some of the other things we'll do with Premier is give you an opportunity to use a software system to create an agent profile. That way your E&O, all the answers to different contracting questions, are all in a singular place. It gives you the opportunity then to click on a company that participates in the program, autofill a contract request, and make certain that the handwriting is legible, much like uh, the purpose for a bunch of the other electronic enrollment devices, or it's also complete. Gives you then the opportunity to bring on multiple carriers much more easily. We also look to support and protect your financial wherewithal, and that includes the offering of a discounted errors and admissions coverage that enables you to own the policy. It's different than being added to a blanket policy for one program or another. This gives you the opportunity to cover those services that you offer in the insurance world, regardless of who your upline is, regardless of who you contract through, however you want to phase it or phrase it. You'll note in this case that it also handles some variable products, and it's awful difficult, getting more difficult all the time to find E&O to cover those spaces. We do also help you keep your license in play with discounted continuing education bundles through our association with WebCE help you add to your own benefit package by the means of a non-cancelable DI program that's a modified issue, a modified guarantee issue where it's discounted and you share in the commission of that product to enhance your own benefit package. Much is where today's presentation has been is being recorded and will be available on our website and YouTube. You also see a library of past presentations available there as well. So not only marketing concepts or programs that are designed to highlight a particular carrier or product, but it gives you the opportunity to access all that information 24 seven at your leisure. Keep in mind, one of the things we really wanna do is make ourselves more effective and efficient and compliant and get more hours out of the day, so to speak, so having access to those electronic tools can be really, really helpful for you. And we also group all the compensation packages for different carriers in a singular spot on our website to make certain that you are being paid and being compensated for your activity. So many carriers will offer trips and incentives. Can't do it for MA and PDP because of the standardized compensation levels dictated by CMS, but the other product is there for you and you see some very appealing packages, particularly rolled out for some of the Medicare supplement programs um, based on production and some of the things that you can deliver in that space. Those programs do help you qualify for the premier trip as well. This last year, well, COVID-19 got it too, canceled it, um, but we are having 
the introduction of incentive programs there for you to compensate our producing agents much more fully. So keep an eye out for that. So all said and done, what we've done for upwards almost to an hour now is go through some areas where you can use standard limitations of benefits in the Medicare arena to sell additional programs. The base medical programs, be they a Medicare supplement or an MA plan, the drug plans that are necessary to augment one or the other, and the other ancillary programs that are necessary to fill the gaps in the coverage of base Medicare coverages that some people aren't aware of. Most commonly dental vision hearing, um, long-term care, and an adjunct discussion of life insurance and finally expense. We want to deliver this information and the tools to address them because we want your business. We want to grow with you and in conjunction with you, and we realize that a lot of people see the rewards. They don't necessarily understand all the hard work that went in to achieve them, but if you have it in your mind that this is a helpful tool for you and you want to get additional information on those key areas where help is needed, that's what we're here for. You can reach us at 1-800-365-8208 or through our website at premiersmi.com. Let's look at and see if we've got different questions here. Bear with me a moment. There's a number. Um, the first question, yes, we are sending the PowerPoint and the recording. Uh, the, the slides on the link aren't clickable here, but you can transfer them over to a, a URL address to make them work. The online enrollment only allows you to show the client's plans that you're certified with. Oh, Susan, that's one program that does that. The Medicare supplement quote engine lists the supplements that we contract with in the area that's very large. It doesn't have every med supplement in the market on that space, but um, it does a ton of different choices, and it will show programs that you may not be necessarily contracted with. In the Medicare Advantage space with the Medicare Center program, currently it will show carriers in there that an integrity platform partner partner has a contract with and gives you that information if you're contracted with them or not. The enhancements that are rolling out for this fall will show the full market in that and another program being introduced. Um, let's see here. Does it allow you to see other carriers not certified with? I know we just talked that. In Connecticut, the dashboard doesn't have the tabs you're showing, how you can access them. Fred, I'm going to uh, make certain that we facilitate a discussion with your uh, marketer to make certain that we get you those answers. Uh, the question is, does MA plans cover chemotherapy? What's the 20% gap he's talking about? Well, uh, Patricia, what I'm talking about is the therapeutic radiology and uh, treatments of that nature in an MA plan are most commonly covered at 80%, 20% of the cost of those procedures are out of pocket and go toward that max out of pocket. That's why we look to discuss, one of the reasons we look to discuss the um, cancer programs and other critical illness programs that are out there. There are some MA plans that will cover that with a co-payment, but the vast majority of them have it on a co-insurance basis. The next one, uh, the nice little joke about the death benefit from Social Security. After you've signed up a client with an MA, MAPD med sup, is it okay to give them an a electronic copy of Medicare in U 2020? Personally, um, I deliver it beforehand, making certain that they have the information. Some folks don't want to confuse people and get them too much information paralysis by analysis, but absolutely, the delivering of that document through either prior to, during, or after the course of the presentation is most certainly appropriate. Is cold calling for med sub prospects allowed for prospects on do not on do not call list? Well, if they're on the do not call list, you can't call them, period. There are some states that have additional regulations as to call campaigns, be they 
a singular dial or you're using a dialer system. Some states don't allow it, some do. And then, of course, well, that depends upon where you live. But definitely, if it's it's an individual who's on the do not call list, you can't call them regardless. Can you show the app name again? I'm not certain, Christy, which app you're referring to in those circumstances, but you'll get uh, this entire presentation so you can see that as well. The slide on the E and O coverage, yep, I'll go back and show that in just a second. And then direct mail campaigns in uh, specific regions, yep, we'll have the, your marketer visit with you about that, and Krista, watch for that too. Or you can dial in the, that toll-free number and they'll hook you up with the person that's helping you as well. Um, ah, okay. Thank you, Colin. The What's Covered Medicare mobile app, um, there is a link in the presentation that will help you with that. It's a avoidable, avoidable, available. There's kind of a Freudian slip. The, uh, through a couple of the services that are used, let's go back and see if we can't get um, a couple of those other slides specific to you. And the last question, well, that was the last question. I discussed the one about the chemo. So this is gonna click us and make it look kind of ugly here for a second, but bear with me. Here we go. The link on the bottom is a face of the, the, this particular campaign was being advertised on Facebook. Um, but if you'll Google Medicare What's Covered app, it'll pull it up and you're able then to pull off that app um, from either the App Store or Google Play and make certain that it works for you. It's a great tool to have regardless. And it's a great tool for the general public as well as part of their ex, uh, education on the processes. The other slide we're going to look at very briefly before we drop is the request for the E&O information. And I'll put a, a link in the follow-up as well to help make certain that you get some particulars on this. This is a program that has a couple different price structures based on the amount of coverage you have and the intent. If you have all your contracts with us, you can get a little discount by uh, working the program for premier carriers only. There are a lot of people out there that put all their contracts in a singular place because, let's face it, not all of us, none of us have every contract everywhere. Um, but this gives you detail as to the cost of that program and the website that's part of it. So that'll be coming to you as well. So. All that said and done, here's our contact information one more time, 1-800-365-8208, or through our website at premiersmi.com. This webinar, as the recording uploads, will be sent to you as part of the follow-up, one of the links in the follow-up. It will also be on our website at premiersmi.com and on our YouTube channel. We've gone a little over the hour. I apologize for that. Um, we do realize that the greatest asset you have, the most valuable asset, is your time. We appreciate the investment of that time with us here today. We look forward to visiting with you again in the very near future. And in the meantime, we wish you good selling. Thanks so very much, and we'll talk to you soon.